All right, so oh, carrots. These are just starting to, to uh, go to size and you can start eating them now. They're wonderful little baby carrots. But definitely in a few weeks, we'll have some uh, nice big carrots. And, you know, carrots is one of, definitely one of those things that gardeners are a little scared of because you want to get nice straight roots and, and uh, pointy carrots that aren't forked. And the key to that is, is soil when it comes to forking. So you want to make sure that you broad fork the bed so that it's loose. You need a lot of organic matter because it needs a nice loose soil to be able to get that root down there. When a carrot germinates, it's going to send a very thin, straight root down. And if it hits anything on the way, it's going to start to fork or it's going to uh, be odd shaped. And I mean, it's not the worst thing, you know, they, they're going to taste great, but if you want some really beautiful carrots, then it's just about the structure of the soil. We're not talking about the uh, whether it's balanced and has all of the nutrients, it's what physically it's composed of. And, you know, a nice blend of oh, just a little bit of clay and some sand and some peat, that's going to create a nice carrot. And so you can have a couple of beds that you use over and over again just for carrots if you have, you know, clay soil and you add sand to it. And you have to go pretty deep, you know, at least 12 to 14 inches. And while that's, you know, I would still consider that no dig and no till because you're just setting the bed up at the beginning and then you're just going to leave it um, so that you can continue to use it. Carrots need to be direct seeded. And I would recommend in a home garden three rows per bed or two, right? Two is going to give you uh, a bit more success at the beginning. It gives you more room. It gives you more air. So if you're just starting out with carrots, definitely two rows per bed and about a half inch in between each uh, seed. And you just dig, you know, make a trench, sprinkle them in and close them. Another tricky thing with carrots is getting them to germinate because they may need 10 to 14 days to germinate. During that whole time, the soil needs to remain moist. So you're going to do this with sprinklers every day and just continue to keep the soil moist. You can also cover it with a uh, row cover lightly. Um, that can work. But I do find that using a sprinkler is better and having soil that has a lot of organic matter to be able to hold on to that moisture so that you can get that good germination. All right? Don't let the soil dry out because then it's going to be over. Another tricky thing with carrots, and you know, carrots are tricky, is weeds. So you definitely want to choose a bed that not only you can get nice straight roots with, but one that uh, isn't very weedy. If you do have a flame weeder, um, and not everything, not every home garden is gonna, you can put the seeds in the ground and then burn it about five to seven days later to kill off any weeds that germinate because weeds will germinate faster than the carrots and that's really the problem is if your weeds germinate really fast and your carrots haven't germinated yet then your carrots are going to germinate into a whole bed of weeds and it's going to cause a big problem. So you either need to hand weed them uh, and then cultivate them immediately, which is why you want to have them in rows and not just sprinkle them across the bed, right? So when you have the carrots in nice rows, you're going to be able to cultivate them and then you can just hand weed in between the carrots to keep the weeds down. Right? So if you follow all of those things, then you can definitely grow nice, straight, beautiful, sweet carrots, and they're going to be lovely. Uh, some of the problems that you can run into with carrots is there's a few. And if the greens get brown or anything like that, there's a lot of blight that hits uh, carrots. And that's very hard to prevent. One way is to keep them dry and that means just watering them in the morning and letting them dry out not watering them in the evening the spray that would be for that is going to be sulfur but it's kind of a losing battle 
If it does happen a lot, your best bet is going to be resistant varieties to any of those leaf blights. Uh, that's going to be your best.